God bless each and every one of you for being here. Thank you, God, for being here. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Um, tomorrow is the, no, Sunday. Yeah, it is Sunday. Tomorrow is the first day of Savon. And I think it's the 25th of this month starts the first fruits, with, which is Shavuot. And so um, we're going to talk about the combination of, of Shavuot and Savon and the powerful of this month. This month is a really powerful month. And to really recapture, first, um, the first month we had two months ago was Nissan. And we spent that whole month worship, praising God and, and glorifying, looking for him, seeking him wholeheartedly, just worship and praise, worship and praise. And that uh, month really represented the tribe of Judah. So we focused on that. Okay. Second month was IR and that was the tribe of Issachar and Issachar was more about revelation, decreeing and declaring. And, you know, because as we, when we set the stage with Judah. And praise and worship are making our connection with God. In the second month, we're, we're like decreeing and declaring. We're, we're setting the stage with preparation and getting things ready, decreeing and declaring and, and moving into our destination. Now, Zebulon's a little bit interesting, and I wasn't going to really teach about Zebulon so much, but um, I think it's important. Um, Zebulon was known to he where his camp was. It was right on the ocean, and so he did a lot of trades. He was a business. It was his, his tribe was more of a business one, but he needed to have you know Judah to come first and do the worship and praise. He needed Issachar, which they knew the times and the season what Israel ought to do. But God is good because then when, when you get it all in the steps right in order, you do your business. Whatever you've been decreeing, declaring, whatever has been prophesied over you, this is the month to move forward. This is the first fruit. This is the production. This month, it's the end of barley harvest in the, be in the beginning of the wheat. Okay. Um, let me actually... I want to, let's see more, stop sharing. I want to go into another more, oh wait, wait, actually I actually did this wrong. I have a hard time sharing, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, share, we go, I have it in, I think it was I, iCloud Drive. Yeah, Shavuot. So anyways, um, Right now we are in Shavuot, okay, and um, this is when the wheat harvest comes. This is when the production comes. So this is when Zebulon really is business minded. This is when the production happens. This was in, when the gathering, the first fruit. This is a good time to give money. This is a good time to give money to the poor, to the orphanages. It's like, you know, you're, it's just like, you're going to get the most for your bang for your buck, you know, and in your giving, because this is when we give to God. This is the first fruits that they give to God with their weak, weak harvest. So, um, and, and they do a wave offering, you know, we, sh we should really look in how they gave, um, to, uh, to God. But anyway, Shavuot, which means weeks, and it marks the conclusion of counting the Omer. Now, the counting of the Omer, I should have, um, the counting of the Omer is a, like a, a sheave of, of wheat. And I think I, ha I do have a picture of it. Let me see if I can actually, if it'll let me pull that in. Oh. Let me stop sharing here. I'm going to show you a picture of the wheat here, if I can get to it here, okay. Um, let me see if I, it'll let me do it this way. I kind of screwed it up, I think. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
There we go. So this is the sheaf of wheat, and one sheaf is approximately one omer. So they're they're finishing up the barley harvest, and then the coming is the wheat harvest. So you want one one. Um, you're going to start um, giving one sheaf of wheat, which is approximately this is one omer right here, and they would for fifty days. For fifty days, they are. Um, going to give a whole omer and they're going to wave it before god okay so actually may 25th is um when we have shavuot which is for the first fruits that we're entering may 25th and um starting sunset and at nightfall um it will end like the, as the 27th and it marks the end of the barley harvest into the beginning of the wheat harvest to two loaves of leaven bread are also offered during this two loaves of leaven bread bread were uh, waved as a wave offering. So um, this is going back Leviticus 23, nine through 21. When we are come into the land, which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring the chef, Omer, of the first fruit of your har harvest unto the priest. Now, I, all my pictures are done by Wiki <laughs> Wikipedia. Um, this is the Omer calendar. Um, I have no idea to interpret this or how to interpret this, but I do find that this calendar was pretty cool. I'm just like... It, God knows what this is really all about. I'd love to have somebody to interpret this calendar for me, but I don't. But it looks pretty intense. And, you know, God is a God of depth. I mean, there's just, we'll never stop learning on this earth all that we need to know. Um, but so anyways, to kind of recap a little bit what I said, the 25th starts Shavuot. And that's when they bring in the um, end of the barley harvest and the beginning of the wheat harvest. And we, we do it, um, it starts um, from Pentecost, from Pentecost, 50 days, or from Passover, I'm sorry, from Passover, you count 50 days, okay, you count 50 days. And every day they bring an omer of wheat and do a wave offering before God. OK, and that's pretty intense. And again, I said this also takes place in the time of Savan, the month of Savan, which is also the month of Zebulon, which he is the business minded tribe. So this is the time where our businesses, whatever we're working on, whatever has been prophesied is to put is to manifest. We are to walk the walk, whatever is been given us to us. This is where we push on. And back in Nissan two months ago, we worshiped and we praised. And now the, the month of, um, and then Issachar, his month, IR was the following month. And that was the time we decreed, we declared, we, you know, it's that in-between month where we're working on preparation, decreeing, getting our hearts right, getting our mind right. Remember, our tongue is a rudder and we use our rudder. And so these previous months, we're really using our rudder to get it all in alignment. Now is the time where, where we're in the month of production. We're in the month of the first fruit. It's, it's bringing in the harvest time. Okay, so that's just really recapping. Um, I'm just looking at Exodus 34. This also talks about the, the harvest here. And the Lord said unto Moses, oh, wait, I take that back. Another thing is, I didn't really bring this up, but this month is a cool month because you had, and I want us to dig deep because we need all hands on deck to pull out every revelation. You know, God gives, may give me some, some revelation, but God has given Reverend Paulette, Minister Grace, whoever, um, Elaine, um, and whoever else is on here, uh, different revelation. So all, all, I don't know who else is on here. Um, OSHA, Grace, Esther, 
we need to dig deep for deep revelation. We want to move forward. The best way to move forward is to have some personal revelation for yourself and, and to work it out. So we want all hands on deck. So uh, the, the point is this month is so powerful because you, you had the Old Testament, you had the Torah written. You had the Torah written during this time. You also had Pentecost during this time. So not only is this a manifestation time, this is a manifestation. Think about it. When the Torah is written, they wandered in the desert. They were preparing. They're getting their hearts right. When their hearts weren't right, they still had to continue on. And remember that the, 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 um, the Ten Commandments were written before. And what killed me is uh, before the first tablets were written, God even told them, you know, do not put any other gods before us. And when, when, you know, when Moses came down, there was the golden calf. So, but it, this was a time of production. This is a time of getting the Torah. This is a time to receiving Pentecost. This is a time of receiving the Holy Spirit, the powerful Holy Spirit, not just the breath of God, one little breath that Jesus, you know, blew into their face. This is a time, the full manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So this is the time that we produce. This is the time of action. This is time of moving forward. And so keep that in mind. So I just want to recap what happened. Let us compare the two, the two testaments, um, new and old. So we're going to just look at, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything up here. Okay, I didn't. Okay, so we're just going to briefly look at um, Moses and the Ten Commandments. And the Lord said unto Moses, he, oh, can anybody read for me? Anybody that's willing? Read on the, on the, on the slide oh. or in yeah. the Bible? Um, go ahead, read, read um, Exodus, starting Exodus 34. Okay, I can try. Okay. okay, thank you. Word of God, Exodus 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, is it King James? Oh my God. It is, yeah. You, but if, yeah. It, okay. Two tables of stone like unto the first. And I will write on upon this table the word that were in the first tables which that break it and be ready in the morning and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount and no man shall come up with thee neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount. And he hew two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto the Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and yes. that will by no means clear the guilty. Amen. Visiting the iniquity of the father upon the children and upon the children, children, and the third to the fourth Thank generation. Shall I stop here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Um, so we here we have this encounter. God has had this encounter. He's producing the um, the Ten Commandments, and, and Moses. I'm, I'll 
um, actually we have two of these slides. Anyways, um, I will continue on a little bit further. Um, and Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worship. And he said, if now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us for it is stiff necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, behold, I make a covenant before all thy people and I will do mar I will do marvelous such as have not been done in the earth nor in any nation. Um, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Um, so one thing is, is this is also a time where God is going to show up, even though we're going to be moving into our destiny and growing. Um, he said, behold, I have made a covenant before all the people I do. I, do, I will do marvels, marvels. So th this is the month where you're going to see a lot of um, miracles happen um, signs and wonders and whatnot. And just, just like the day of Pentecost, just like the, the, these stones, um, being made, um, observe, did anybody else have any other revelation they wanted to add? Cause sometimes when I teach, I just keep going. Anything that we read that you wanted to add, just go ahead, but you know, just go ahead and speak. Oh, here I have a chat. Uh, oh, okay. Anne's at, at, at work at mute. Okay. Thank you. Anyways. Um, and, and he said, behold, I, okay. 11 observe thou, which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittite, the presidents, Hivites and Jebusites. You know, this is where God is doing the driving. He is moving, but we are moving. We are doing our part. What happens if Moses said, oh, God, take care of the Ten Commandments. Do it all. And he didn't do what God told him to do. We wouldn't have the Ten Commandments. There's a lot of Christians out there that won't do their part and expect God to do everything for them. And the sideline Christians. So we need to do our part during this month and God will do the rest. But we need to do our part. Um, and then he continues on about what, uh, how, how to, um, worship and, and, um, to really tear down the, the high, the other, the evil altars. But I want to jump to, um, verse 26, talking about the first, first fruits. Okay. Cause this, this is where on 26, it talks about the first fruits, which is Shavuot which is going to happen on the 25th. Okay. Um, the first fruit of, okay. The first of the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord, thy God, and thou shalt not see, seeth a kid in the mother's mouth. Well, it talks about do not, but they don't, God didn't want us to boil. Um, was it a goat in its mother's milk? I don't think we'd be doing that, but, I don't know if they were doing it or if another religion does it. I don't know. But this is the first that this now in his commandments, he talks about the first fruits. And it shall bring unto the house of the Lord thy God, bring the first fruits. OK, so as he's doing the Ten Commandments, writing the tablets, he um, is writing the law. He's giving the Torah to Moses this time. Um, so it, it continues on. And I'm going to continue reading because this is important. And the Lord said unto Moses, write thou these words, for after thy tenor of um, these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. So he made a covenant with Moses and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Um, he did neither eat bread nor drink water. That's amazing. And he wrote, when he's, you're in the glory, God, I guess, feeds you supernaturally. Um, and we came down from the mountain that Moses was not, that the skin of his, the skin of his face shone while he talked 
with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come night and day. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with him. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandments gave them in commandments all the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai until Moses had done speaking with them he put a veil on his face but when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him he took the veil off until he came out and he came out and spoke unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses and the skin of Moses' face and Moses put the veil upon his face again and he went in to speak with him. So here you do, he's coming down and the glory is so bright that the the rest of the people can't even handle the, um, the face of Moses. And really that's where our connection needs to be. We're connecting and we're producing. So we need to stay um, with God. Now, I wanted to say a uh, kind of the back setting of the stage. In chapter 32, going back on Exodus 32, 28. So the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses and about 3,000 men of the people. Okay, this was a kind of um, the golden calf. If you go back to when Moses did the first 10 commandments and you know he had the glory show on him then and then he came back and um and the gold calf Aaron you know used all their gold but what I find interesting when I was uh, looking at this in o- o- uh, Exodus 32 28 the sons of Levi did according to to the word of Moses and about 3,000 men of the people fell that day you know th- when he came back, they ended up slewing 3,000, 3,000 men who um, did not stand with God. They wanted to continue to have the false idols. And 3,000 were, sl- you know, I'm sure y'all remember that, but they killed 3,000 Israelites that day. The Israelites, the a Levi um, and Moses, they killed actually 3,000 that worshiped the calf and refused to repent um however before he even came to make the first two stones god had a supernatural encounter also again there was another supernatural encounter i'm just going back kind of like building up to when we got the final product of the torah because this is the same time torah and pentecost happened the same time but there was there was a lead up to it all. So back in Exodus 2018, um, this was going and preparing to make the first tablets. Um, 2018, and all the people saw the thunder and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mount, uh, mountain smoke. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us and we will hear but let not god speak with us lest we die and moses said unto the people fear not for god is come to approve you and that his fear may be before your face that he said that ye sin not and the people stood far off and moses drew near unto thick darkness where god was the Lord said unto Moses, um, I don't know why I got this image of when Abraham did his sacrifice and there was thick darkness that came upon him. And then he saw the revelation of um, the Israelites being in captivity 400 years in Israel. That just flew through me. Okay, amen. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that just threw, threw me of when when. Abraham was in that thick darkness too, um, and saw that. Anyways, 
Um, ye shall not make me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold, an altar of earth that shall make unto me and shall sacrifice there thereon thy burnt offering and thy people offering, thy sheep and thy oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. Um, again, maybe that's why that shot through my brain because Abraham made an altar to God. So that's important. And if thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shall not build it on hew stones for thou lift up thy tool upon it. Thou has fluted it. Neither shall thou go up by the stone unto my altar that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. And the reason why I highlighted nakedness is because um, when um, other people would worship their gods, they actually would have sex on the altar and would be naked. So, you know, God is a God of righteousness. And so we needed to cover that. And I think if I go back to the golden calf, there might have been some of that. I, I think I read that. Um, but anyways, no nakedness, pure, holy. Before, okay, so before God wrote the Ten Commandments, he made it very clear to everyone to have no other gods before him. Here he, say, he said it. And what happened when Moses left? When Moses left to do the first Ten Commandments, they started worshiping, you know, the, the um, calf the golden calf. So this was very um, fascinating why they didn't even hear him, you know. Um, so really take that, you know, and all this preparation, it was like they were still missing it. Um, so here we have Pentecost. Now that's 50 days from Passover. That's where we get Pente from. And every day they're bringing omers of God and doing a wave offering with two loaves of bread. I mean, leaven bread, which, um, you know, is, is significant. Um, so let's read. We're going to compare. I want you to take notes and try to compare what is really happening with the Ten Commandments, with the Torah, and with Pentecost and the manifestation of it all. And, uh, you know, dear Heavenly Father, please, uh, we pray for a deeper revelation, Father, that only you can give us in the name of Jesus. Father, help us to share, help us to eat each, each one of us have something to share and get something out of this in the name of Jesus. Acts 2, okay, and when the first day of Pentecost was full, fully come, fully come, fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it fulfilled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and it sat up upon each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devoted men out of every nation and under heaven. Now when this was um, noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they that every man heard them speaking in a own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak um galileans and who and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born Corinthians, medias elamites and <laughs> dwellers of mesopotamia and judea and Cappadocia. Dosia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Philema and Egypt in the parts of Libra and Serene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and <laughs> Arabians, 
Arabians, we do not hear the speaking in our own tongue, the wonderful work of God, the wonderful work of God, the wonderful work of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mock, uh, mocking said, these men are full of new wine, but Peter standing up with 11, with 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my word. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeking it, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on our, um, and on our servant and on our handmaidens, we will pour out in these days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And we shall show wonders in heaven and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sudden shall the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and noble day of the Lord coming. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear the words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye, as ye yourself are also known him, being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken by the wicked hand have crucified and sent and slain whom had raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be hold of it for david speaketh concerning him i foresaw the lord saying behold my face for he is on my right hand and i shall not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will the suffering thy holy one to see corruption that thou, thou has made known to me the way of life that shall make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let us or let let me freely speak unto you of the patriot david that he both dead and buried is sepulchre is worth us unto this day therefore bring a prophet and knowing that god has sworn with an oath to him that of the first of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up christ to see on his throne. He's seen this before, spake, uh, uh, spake of the resurrection of Jesus, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh nor seed corruption. The Jews had God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the righteous hand of God exalted and have received of the Father of the promise of the Holy Ghost to have shed forth this which ye now see and hear for david is ascended into heavens but he said himself the lord said unto to my lord sit now at my right hand until i make you make the um foes thy footstool therefore let the house of israel know assuredly that god has made the same jesus whom ye have crucified both lord and christ now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter, let the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of the Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises you and your children and all that are far off, even as the children of God shall call. And with many other words, did ye testify and exalt, exhort saying, save yourself from this wicked generation that they gladly receive his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls and they continued steadfast with the apostles degree and fellowship and the breaking of the bread and with prayer now the bread remembers that's like the Torah that's the meat that's the word of God and with prayer and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and so their possessions and goods and part partened them and all men even every man had known and they continued daily with one accord one accord one accord and and breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and single heart praising God and having favor with the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as they should save. So we see here, uh, we read through Pentecost and Shavuot and the celebration. Um, and, and also what happened, I find this interesting. This was also when, when the Torah was written, it was like the birth of Israel. Okay. So the birth of Torah, the birth of Israel, the birth of the church happened, birth of speaking in tongues happened. This was a whole new way to commune with God. This was our connection. You know, we go directly to God through Jesus Christ. You don't feel like there's a barrier. I know as a Catholic, I always felt God was kind of distant. And so the barriers were broken. Um, the glory invaded both. If you look at the Shavuot, um, the Torah, this is when God really invaded. And at uh, Pentecost, the Shavuot, this is when God invaded. This is the time and the season that we're in where God really truly invades. But we have to do our part for to get our manifestation of what God wants to do in our life. Uh, this is just a side note. Ruth was read during this time. They always, uh, during this time. And it is said that King David was actually birthed during this time. Um, those are just little side notes. But I want us to open up, if we can open up and share uh, what commonalities we have at, of the Torah and um, Pentecost, what other common things and themes do we see in here? Oops. Can anybody um, see anything? Okay, I'll, I'll do one. Remember uh, the, please. oh, please, Reverend Paula. Okay, when I, uh, I read, uh, the the thing you asked me to read the passage and i saw you i went to my dictionary because um i'm like that uh, my um i will the spirit will make me stop on one word oh, and no. then from the word it will give me the revelation so when i hear you he's to like hold firmly like um I, I read the the actually the the meaning is saying um hold firmly something firmly as is by addition wow uh-huh hold firmly so god himself wrote those table we have to remember that with mm. his own hand he didn't dictate to someone to write it no wow. he himself uh, wrote the tables of the commandment that he gave to Moses to go and read to people. You understand? Yeah. Now, when I was looking at it, then he brought me in the room of the, what happened at the Pentecost. He said, at the Pentecost, instead of writing on the table, he wrote in, in their heart. Amen. 
you see. He said he wrote in their heart what they were supposed to uh, do. Uh, it was a difference with the time of Moses. The mm -hmm. time of Moses is wrote on tables. In the time of the Pentecost, he wrote in their heart. Okay, and so. the word that he gave to them, because you know the word is a living word. The mm -hmm. word that he gave to them uh, at, the, at, the, at the Pentecost, at, not at the Pentecost, but at the time of Moses, that word need to be read over and over. You remember they were, yes. they were pull the, the, the Torah, they will open the, one of uh, the strip and they will read like the book of this, the book of that. But he said in the Pentecost, actually, the word was written in their heart in such a way that the word in their heart now, when spoken, become alive. Amen. I hope I didn't go left and yeah, right. Yeah, that was good. Everybody. No, you did. No, you did. And it's funny because when I teach this, sometimes I, it's like I go too fast and I skip over stuff where I wanted to pause and ponder, and I need to take a step back. But I no, that is exactly it. And, and I thank God that He used you to stop and pause and listen to Him. Yeah, um, and the, He used the same word you. That means to hold to something firmly. So if he, he hear the word in our heart so that we can hold to that word firmly, you know how we say that David say, I will hide your word in my heart so I will not sin. So he put the word in the heart already so Amen. we can hold to it firmly. And oh, I think the rest we can all imagine. Amen. Also, I wanted to add to what you said, because when they did the golden calf, 3,000 of them died. Mm -hmm. When um, the Pentecost came, 3,000 were baptized into Christ. Amen. So you actually had the, the, the law still, mm -hmm. but Jesus came to give life. Mm -hmm. So um so that's exactly coming into you know having it in their hearts in the word of god being alive and and bringing life so the word of god brings life three thousand were added that day and that uh, when the um calf the golden calf three thousand died that day so the, the letter actually kills so, amen Add, it's interesting because I was thinking about the passage in the book of Acts where you said they were cut off. and when they heard all the, 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 the rendition of what had happened, that what when Peter was sharing that Jesus Christ was crucified and they said they were cut to the heart and asked what will they do? And he said, repent and be baptized. And, and I, I, I'm just thinking the difference is that they were, they, they were deeply, they really, they totally believed and they, they embraced and they, they took hold of everything. And that's why they could have that repentant heart, that demeanor. Because the other thing that stood out to me is when you said, when, 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 when you were reading, I think it's in Acts, but it could have been in the Old Testament, but was saying that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall shall be um, saved. Shall be saved. And it means that anyone who calls is at that point, they are, because at this point, Jesus has died, they would be, they, they would have so much conviction that any moment God would just if any time of a repentant heart crying out Lord save me they would receive it right away because their hearts were cut so even at, at, yeah. at a point of salvation let's say at an 11th hour for an individual the the the, the entering of the the uh, acceptance of Jesus as Lord, as God, as the only one and only, and um, the understanding that we're not worthy, all, you know, happening all at one second or whatever, it, it, it gives the complete total access of God's love. 
because, you know, it says, while we were sinners yet, he died. And so it takes the sinner, the realization of, of I've been forgiven and just saying, Jesus, I need you. And he's, he's in right away. You know, in the Old Testament, it was chiseled on, on stone. And maybe that's a reflection of a heart of stone. I Amen. don't know. But yeah. they, were, they were not, they couldn't really, they were so hardened and into their ways of the land that they had, you know, taken on the idolatry that they were like, you know, it's for you, you do it. I mean, they, they still didn't, it was like, okay, fine. But there was no, you know, it was animals who died. So it, this was now yeah. a human being. So it cut them really deeply. I guess is what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I, th I think you're right. I didn't even think of it, you know, that exactly what you and Reverend Paulette said that it was written on stone at first well that stone now we have it was written on in, in the New Testament is written on the heart but stone kind of represented their hearts at the time you know because it was kind of like anytime Moses showed up is like Moses stay away you know you're, you're you're too bright for us we can't handle it you know and uh, Moses had a bunch of you know three or four glory encounters with God before you know he finalized the um the uh, 10 commandments the lot you know finalized it all um any other I know a lot of other people have some revelation here that they would just love to share well Rev shared also during the week <laughs> am I still muted that no, during no. the week when she did her lesson you know what was the difference with why why was Moses able to access and the people not? And it was th what we're saying now, the exact baptism of the Holy Spirit. They, Moses was, he had the fire. He was in, he was, he had everything. He was with God. He, his face to face, he knew him. And the people didn't bother. <laughs> I yeah. mean, they, they just took it for granted. They were not grateful even okay. though they had seen they had seen the hand of god because they had seen all his miracles they 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 had also seen you know the magicians or the magi do stuff so maybe they okay. just thought well okay you know what they're kind of on par i don't know what they thought but they were hardened what what I think is interesting is, you know, when people get baptized, they make it that relationship with God. And you see in the Old Testament, it, they didn't do anything personal mm -hmm. with God, where Moses did all these personal things with God. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, exactly what you're saying. Exactly what you're saying. Amen. Amen. Um so let's see so here and then um let's see what else did i wrote down here um so actually during this time anybody other comments just please just jump in um because i think we did a good job of comparing the two but this is the time this is the time savan is this month it starts uh -huh. Go on. sorry if I can yes, say, I don't know if this is accurate, but this came to my spirit that, you know, you said in the book of Acts, we were reading that everybody had what they needed. Like every, they were one yes. and, and nobody, wow. nobody, um, nobody lacked. And the thing with Sivan and, you know, we, we were, when we were looking at all the months and how they build up, there was worshiping, there was rejoicing, then there was revelation, and then there was the time yes. of business, and then there was the time of a rewarding. You, you reward, you get the reward. And if you look at the process, they were, they were, they, they learned, they were rejoicing in the upper room. Well, the, the disciples received the Holy Spirit, but when others were drawn, they were drawn because of the all the revelation they could see they could see the worshiping they had seen them then they they wanted to know more so they were getting revelation Amen. and then when they 
when they understood, they said, what should we do? So it was time of business. And then when they were told repent, they repented and then they received all what they needed. Amen. So, I'm going to jump. Uh, amen. Amen. And, and um, if I didn't put this in here, but in the first chapter of the book of Acts, you know, think about it. Moses was up in the Mount Sinai for 40 mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. and um in verse three it says to to whom also he's shown himself alive after his passion by man, um by many infallible proofs being seen of them days. 40 days and speaking mm -hmm. of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god yeah um and he told him to stay in Jerusalem, stay in Jerusalem. You know, it's interesting. I don't know why I just thought of this, but uh, you think of the Gaza Strip. You know, the Gaza Strip is, you know, how God has borders all over the pl place, you know, for the 12 tribes. Judah is actually where Gaza Strip is. Their territory is Gaza Strip. Mm. Uh, I find that interesting. And I don't know where I was headed with that, but um, just so you know. <laughs> um, and I find that interesting because um, you know, Judah means praise and, and worship. So I, I just don't know when dealing with land, um, how that all pertains, but I found, I just find that fascinating. Um, so for 40 days, they both had these, these encounters with God, you know, at Pentecost and um, Shavuot, Jesus, or, uh, Moses had his time. Um, I know there's so much here. Anybody else would like to add? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Let's see. I want to, we'll go ahead. And one, another thing that I did find interesting that the Jewish people do do, like I said, they read the book of Ruth and David, they say David was born this month. Um, actually, I don't know about that, but anyways, that's what they say. So, um, and they read Psalm, Psalm 69. They pray throughout Psalm 69 this month during, during this feast. During the feast of Shavuot, they they pray over this, and I won't go through the whole thing because well, um, and, and see how this I can only understand actually when it comes down to the last five, um, starting in thirty. Do I really understand why they would be reading it? But it was to me, I was like, why do they read this? So let's work through this. Um, Psalm sixty nine, save me, O God. For the waters are come into my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no, no standing. I, I am come into deep waters where the flood overflows me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully, are might. Then I restore the, that which I took not away. O oh God, thou knowest my foolish, foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for thy sake, O God of Israel. Because for thy sake, I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my face. I am become a stranger unto, the, unto our brethren and the aliens and to my mother's children. For the zeal of thy house hath eaten me up and the reproach of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me when I wept and chastened my soul was fasting that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me, and I was the song of a drunkard. But as for my prayers, and this is where I think it's important, as for my prayers is unto thee, O Lord, 
in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy. Hear me in thy truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of thy enemies and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood over me, neither let the deep swallow me up and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to thy multitudes of thy tender mercies and hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because my of my enemies. Thou has known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before thee. Reproach has broken my heart and I am full of heaviness and I looked for someone to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters by I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink let their ta um, tables become a snare before them and that which should be should have been for their welfare let it become a trap let the eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually to shake pour out thy indignations upon them and let thy wrath full anger take hold of them let their inhabitants be desolate let none dwell in their tents for they persecute him who has had smitten and they talk to the grief of those who thou has wounded add iniquity upon the iniquity and let them not come on to thy righteous let them be let them blot out of the book of the living let them be blot out of the book of the living and be written with and not be written with the righteous, but I am poor and sorrowful. Let the salvation, O oh God, set me up on high. I praise the name of God who with a song and um, will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that has horns and hoofs. Then humble shall see this and be made, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord has the poor and despise not his prisoners. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas, um, even things that move therein. For God will save Zion. This is what, why I thought of this. For God will save Zion. For God will save Zion. For God will save Zion and will build the city of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servant shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. Amen and amen. Um, if you can look a little bit at this, um, you know, it's like, why do they read this one or pray through this? This is, this is their psalm that they use for Shavuot. And these are the things that came to my mind, but you probably can go deeper and, and to realize, um, but here the attacks, the insults, the coming against, we know that that's what the enemy does, but he here was starting in third, um, you know, starting in verse 30, starting in verse 30, where he talks about praise the name of the Lord with song and magnify him with thanksgiving. This is what the Lord really is pleased. It's not those sacrifices of, of the animals. Um, and the Lord hears him, you know, for the Lord hears the poor and despise not his prisoners. He doesn't, you know, those prisoners that are, that the enemy has and let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves there in for God will save Zion for God will save Zion and will build the city. You know, we're talking about, you know, the month of Savan is the building and the uh, things manifesting, but the, but will um, the building of the city of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession and the seeds also of his seed shall inherit it. And they that love his name shall 
dwell therein. In the name of Jesus, let it all be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, anybody want to add what we just read, what we've gone through? Okay, there's got to be more insight here. Any insight, any insight, any thoughts going through your head, any thoughts you're receiving, any revelation. Okay. No. Okay. So these are, um, dear heavenly father, I just pray for extra wisdom, extra revelation, supernatural revelation during this time, father, in the name of Jesus, put on our hearts and our mind, um, what you want us to pray, what do you want us to seek after you, you, we seek after you father. And, and we thank you father, because last month was all about, well, today is still the last month is all about revelation, Lord God, the month of IR. And Father, so we thank you for that. We thank you for going into the month of Sivan, Father, Lord God, which is your manifestation. And we working with you, um, bringing the word of God into manifestation, Father, Lord God, and help it just to be a powerful month and to see your glory and to see your goodness throughout this month as they did in, 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 when the, uh, during the as Moses did during um, you writing the tablets, the Torah, your glory shown in the Pentecost, your glory invading us. Father, we thank you, Father, because we believe your time is here, that you will invade, you will invade, your glory shall invade each and every one of us. Your glory shall invade each and every one of us in the name That's of right. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, Grace, you wanted to add, honey? <laughs> yeah, I just got something and I... Because I, I was thinking and um, just wondering, you said that they read the book of Ruth. And yes. Psalm. And the thing with it is that if we know Ruth's journey, she had been through devastation. She had lost her sons. She had lost her. She just lost her husband, everything. And she had journeyed from so far, come for days and finally they find the king, which is Boaz. They're at his feet. You know, she finally... Amen. guides me to be at his feet um and then there's this victory because there's a, a wedding they, they unite and then there's all the lineage and then it comes to christ and so if you do draw a parallel with pentecost day it's like maybe they're showing they're they're saying these are all the things that you have seen mm -hmm. um you know we've been through and we're just now we're just going to rejoice because you know when they they at the end of the the scripture where we read like in um the, 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 i will praise the name of god and uh, of god with a song and magnify him they like bringing you have seen all this is it they're brought you've seen the enemy you've seen everything and now we're just going to praise you because you are god and it's kind of like a parallel with Ruth's life, they, Naomi's life, going through all this trouble finally. And then God is ultimately the king comes out of all this. Amen. You know? Amen. So it's like the glory of God is just just sing because doesn't doesn't matter if the earth gives way or it's just kind of saying like now we're just going to praise you because you're God and nothing is impossible Amen. for you. And so, you know, when we just praise and praise and praise, he restores everything. Like, it's like God is given, we give you the glory to do your thing. You know, do, do you, you go for war before us, you do it, you Amen. establish. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm, Amen. Um, that's the thank you. That I'm seeing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. Um, I do want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but we, we're still, I don't know. I don't know if Osha is able to open up because she knows probably more what's going on with Israel than I do. Um and, but I guess there's still, you know, 
it's amazing what God is doing over there too, where you guys saw the newspaper where, um, first of all, at, of course, I don't know where we're at this week, but last week, only one, um, soldier, a Jewish soldier was killed. Um, and I don't know how many of the enemies were killed, but God had deflected by wind, deflected all their rockets. So that is a testimony that God is still with Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Did anybody feel led to pray for Israel? Okay. Um, <laughs> please. Hi. I'm Thank sorry. You. I'm in the middle of packing. So that's why I'm not being uh, there. Yeah. Okay. I'm moving today. So anyway, Father, we just praise you. We thank you, oh okay. God of Israel, and to the Shabbat Shalom, yes, the Lord. peace of not yes. only Jerusalem, for the world, Father God. Let us feel that sense, that same peace that, that we feel when we go to Israel. Yes, Lord. Touching the ground at the airport, Father, there is such a presence of your spirit. And Lord, let that peace breathe upon us, breathe that same peace even here in America, Father, that the hearts of those that are standing with Israel. You said those that bless Israel shall be blessed. And Father, those that curse her shall be cursed by her, Father. But we ask that you turn the hearts of those that are against her, Father. And Lord, not even yes. her, it's you, Father God. Let our hearts rise in a new and a, in an it's awesome perfect. way to continue to pray for this nation that the king is coming back to. The king of king is coming back to Jerusalem, Father, on the Mount of Olives, Father, where, where Father God, many will see and have seen, and we will continue Continue to see in the spirit, Father, what you're showing us, Lord. We thank you for continuing victory into that nation, yes, Father, Lord. across the, the Lebanon borders and the Gaza strips and all that is happening, the fierceness of war, Father. But in the midst of it, your victories are still prevailing. You're still yes, laughing at the Lord, plans the of the of enemy, Father. You thank laugh you. at this tragedy in the plans of the enemy because you know it before it even ha happens and father we thank you for thank covering you. their heads father covering the jews even as they go to the wailing wall and pray father those stones and bricks that the, the arabs and the muslim throw upon them let yes, the stones go back into their own feet into their own homes and even touch the, what belongs to them that would hurt them that it would feel father your pain yes. and they would put a stop to it father god lord we pray for those that are the enemies lord father they would bow their knees to the lordship of jesus christ lord your desires that no man shall perish father and both of them are abraham's seed the jews yes, and the, lord, the and arabs yes. they're from his loins father lord and you said you would bless abraham's seed with all many generations and I believe in your word says you would bless Ishmael too Lord but bless them with salvation at this time bless yes, them with salvation Lord, in the name of Jesus let in the name salvation of Jesus. be their prominent um a desire and goal and not to kill the Jews in their foolishness mm -hmm. and their ignorance father and their pride and their anger but Lord turn those hearts back to Lord, Lord, raise up many more like Michael and Mordecai, that when he lived yes, in Israel, Lord. he used to go across the border. He went against the grains. As a Jew, he would go and minister to the Arabs and Muslims, Father. Lord, yes. raise up more like him in Israel, that he, he would risk even his their lives to go and tell about a Yeshua, the light of the world, Father. Lord, we just thank you for these coming days and weeks and the intensity of this yes, war. Lord. Lord, Lord, that you would continue to blow your wind as the, 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 the nations are raising up, they're rising up. There's many, many ministries across yes, America Lord, and Jesus. the nations that are 21 days fasting, intensely praying for Israel. Lord, we thank oh, you. Yes. Your coming is nigh. Your coming is nigh because the nations are rising up to pray for what concerns your heart, Father. And that's revival in itself, Father God. We thank you that all Israel shall be saved, not only in the physical location, but across the nations. You would bring yes, the Lord. Jews back to the land, Father. Yes, Over Lord. Over 70,000 of all 
already come from Russia and Ukraine and different parts of the world. Over 70,000 has been documented. It's already took Aliyah in Israel, Father. We thank you for more yes, coming back home again. Father. Thank you, Jesus. Many more. Break every resistance in their hearts as to not want to go yes, back to their Lord, land. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we praise you for the protection this week. We bless you for the protection. We declare and agree, decree not one drop of blood of a Jew yes, will be Lord. spilled this week. We declare and decree yes, Lord, not another of son of Abraham will die. Not yes, another Lord, of son Jesus. of Abraham will die die by the hands of the enemy because you did not pr promise Abraham that. You said there his seed will live to a thousand generations. Yes, Lord. Father, that's Jesus. what you promised Abraham. And let their yes, seed Lord. live long and healthy lives, Father. Their sons will not be taken foolishly. Yes, their daughters will not be raped, Father. Lord, you did not promise that to him. And we declare, yes, we decree that the Jews come back to the Messiah because you're their only protection. Father, speak to the wealthy Jews yes. across the nations to bless their own people. They're supposed to be the head, not begging, Father, as they've been doing. Yes. The little children are begging in the streets, Father. That's not your word. And we praise and we thank you, Lord, that you're going to raise up those to come and bless their own people. Those yes, that have great work in this nation and great wealth, they will they move upon their hearts to send for their own people, Father. Yes, Lord. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Osha. God bless you. God bless you for, for um, doing that. I'm going to stop recording here.